sorry, coming up with a process that you master. So that's okay. that. So the process, it's kind of like it's a framework. You've already got it with your four steps. Yeah. But you can just add some steps in, right? Like, mm -hmm. like you can just create it so you're always bringing them to the crescendo. Can you right? spell crescendo for me? E R E S C E N D O. And um, I'm not familiar with that word. So can you give me an example? Or I just so because I, 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 it's a lost word. So I need to connect it with something. Okay. So crescendo is kind of like the highest energy state of a certain process. Okay. So if, if, if something is in music, the crescendo is kind of like the, the build, the build, the build. And all of a sudden, you know, I don't know if you know, to rave sometimes you can have the peak. And at that peak, you're at, the, you're, you're dancing like crazy for yeah. 20, 30 minutes or something like that, but it built up to get there. Right. Yes. And there's certain songs that are really good at building up to that kind of crescendo, okay. but it, it takes a sort of like a start and a setup where the setup is you're looking at the crescendo, you know, you're heading to the crescendo and the buildup in between are the steps to it. But if you didn't set it up right, you wouldn't get there. And when you use the music analogy, this whole step process makes sense because I can visualize it in music. My husband's very into music. And so, so like I, I was a competitive synchronized swimmer. So even the steps, when I put it in that compa capacity, you know, if, the middle is the peak of where you're at. It's kind of like when you're climbing a mountain, right? And so kind of getting up and when you reach the peak of the waterfall or whatever, that's where you want to get to, but then you've got to go back down. What um, what for me that I, I feel stuck is working with people, how would you work through this process with them? I, I'm a little bit stuck there. Well, let's say your crescendo is your putting all the pieces together into one whole. Okay. So they see it, they get the big picture and then, you know, okay. so, so then your start as they came in with their bag, their pieces, their setup as you put it on to the floor and you started to look at your categories and then your build is now you're starting to see, okay, well, what works, what doesn't like you're, you're starting to connect those pieces together piece by piece and building like all the things, yeah. that you're okay. but then at the crescendo, you've got, Okay, we got the whole idea. We got the plan, but then the ease out might be the the blocks that come up as soon as you start going forward. The real blocks come up, and then you really got to go deep into the psychology more. And then the connect and unify could be like integrating that shadow piece or integrating, you know, finding out the pieces that were missing again, or the or stuff, you know, connecting it into the whole. And the finish is. The success of attaining that goal so you're yes. there's a different time period in between these but because you've got this in the background framework and i think what i'm giving you is you're coming up from reality into the like you're starting with the you know what do you got here's what it is formulate it put it together as a package and go so you're not you're not using let's say the a framework like I'm bringing in right now. Right. And so I'm coming in with a theoretical ideal mm -hmm. that becomes a universal reference point for the mind that is looking to cr again, create a universal reference point that the four of you, and then everyone that you're bringing together has the same mental reference point for designing and building systems and having mm -hmm. tools that fit together. So your bringing reality into that yes because again it's theory these are these are words these are concepts this isn't necessarily life but it's if you look at a concept like resources and and you 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 have it as a formulation of okay well this is how you get the amount of resources for what i need to do because most of the times in business or some sort of project is there's a lack of resources mm -hmm. and it could be time it could be money it could be the asset it could be Whatever it is, there's something missing in order to build your whole system. And so what you've done is figure out a very simple process to find out, well, what resources do you need? What do you have? How do you put them together? And then if you don't have them, how do you get them? And then here we go, right? Mm -hmm. now, that's, now that's one aspect of the flow wheel, resources. Yes. But if you, if you go to the path mm -hmm. and you go, okay, well, what path, what sequence, how are we going to do this? It's, it's looking at it differently. You're looking at it through these two, two conceptual lenses 
that each conceptual lens, the conversations or the relationships or the agreements or the field or the job or activities, this now is a universal sort of map of lenses for you to look at the pieces together. Because when you put those pieces down, some are gonna be activities, some are gonna be resources, some are gonna be relationships. I'll bet you everything on that flow map is going to be on those pieces of the puzzle. But what this is doing is it's creating this map lit system where now you're looking at going, oh, there's the resources. Oh, that's the relationship. Oh, that's this. Oh, that's this. Oh, that's this. Yes, for sure. So how do you do that in the capacity we're talking with the shared knowledge community? Because we're talking about people, right? And so we're talking about working through a process with people. So the start would be the hub factor, correct? Yes. And then the setup would be that secondary meeting where they come in and sit with the three or the four of us, or would that be a different step? Well, I think I like I started working on a survey and something which is something that is more comprehensive because I believe that, you know, from you need a diagnostics, that's more like an assessment, right? Where, you, where yes. you're doing it normally with your questions and people do it differently and each one has their own way, but let's say a thousand people are coming to the hub, you know, at some point you need a way to systematize the parts that you, you don't really want to do by yourself. A survey is the best way to do it. Um, so that to me is, is because I think that the number of numbers, like I think your capacity is, is, is huge. And at, you may be moving from that one-on-one -on -one coaching into team coaching into like larger group coaching kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And that's a different kettle of fish. And it, it, um, it takes more time because it was interesting with that when I worked with Sylvia and Lori together, I had Bonnie there as a facilitator because for me, in order to pick up what I need to pick up, there's, I can't be running up and writing because what's key for me is being able to take the notes because that's how it sticks in my brain. And then I love being able to give them to people after I format them and everything. So, um, yeah, I, I totally, I like this system and those steps and everything I think is easy for me to put into my practice now and just kind of um, just change the, right now, um, when I do a proposal, I can just reword it and kind of have those things lined up and that's totally doable. I think where I am feeling you know, where I feel like we're not running parallel with uh, what you're talking about it and what's actually transpiring for us is there's huge value to the shared knowledge community, but we haven't created a way for us to do those masterminds. There's not a date in our calendar yet, you know, and that. So if we have people that we feel should start in the mastermind with us, we have nowhere to put them. So we're looking at the, the, talents and the things we already have and looking at one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not opposed to the mastermind, but there isn't any structure to it right now for us. So it would be far easier to bring people into a mastermind where they meet once a week and you can do it virtually or you can do it face-to-face. -face. And, you know, you can start with one person. So it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but as more people come through the hub, and I really like that, I think that's value. What we found is we started talking about the shared knowledge community. It became overwhelming for people because everyone's thinking about, well, I'm already doing this, right? Like, for example, when Node and Guy came, not so much Guy, but that concept to them was incredibly overwhelming, right? Node especially just said, like, to think he has to fit into an area, right, where he wants to utilize the resources we have in the hub to benefit his business. And so it's just different trains of thought, right? And I think that's where, so, so, I think we need to put some structure behind this process and this map that you're talking about. And I know you're working with all of us, so I know that's your goal, but we need to go back to the group and say, are we doing masterminds and who's taking what, when are we doing them? When are we starting? Because otherwise we just don't have anywhere to put anyone in this system. And what's the cost gonna be for someone coming to a mastermind and what does that kind of look like? So there's synergy. Gotcha. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I mean, the thing is, the idea is to have everyone have their ideal job. But then if 
your ideal job doesn't want to have anything to do with masterminds or any of this other stuff. It's it's like, okay. <laughs> I love masterminds. I've seen, I've seen a lot of value in it, right? I've taken a few. So for me, I really love masterminds. They work well when you have, so maybe right now it, it, it's not our initial step. Maybe this is what we start in September simply because we've had that many people through the hub and we can say, do you want to take it deeper? Here's the mastermind we're starting. And then we utilize your survey, which helps us map out where people should go into which group. So right now we're just trying to just get people familiar with their process, but what's showing up for us because of the women inviting other women and because of like the people who are really promoting on our behalf, Sheila and Bonnie, they, there's a lot of women showing up right now who want, who know that they need to make a change, but maybe they're stuck because of their fear. And often the fear is the fear of the unknown, or they just need to rework their thinking financially so they can understand that, like Lori said, she worked with someone who had a side business was making 12 or $14 an hour, but did massages at 80. And it's like, so you spend one hour and it equates to six. So we're, those are the people that are coming to us. So we're thinking, how can we start helping them on a process that's maybe more one-on-one -on -one because they want to start emerging into these businesses? Mm. But we ultimately, anyone who comes through the hub then would get your survey, you know, um, and then they would, we'd actually be able to categorize. And we bought a um, corporate membership for the Enneagram, the one that Lori sends everyone. So we get all their results. So the thought was, you know, we'd love to connect with you. Our gift to you is this free Enneagram because we'll cover the $12 cost for it for now. We get the result. And then that allows us to really see and we, we group them maybe instead of specifically around the artist and the healer and the planetary guardian unless with your survey you guys can create those things for us but it's just a way that we don't have to think about how to group people and then out of the four of us we already know you know like um you know we know that like for me the entrepreneur and the tech guru our huge marketing is another one that I can do quite easily, but Sylvia is actually pretty ingenious at marketing, like, and stuff like that too. So, um, you know, and Lori's and Lori and Carrie kind of overlap in some of their skill sets that they can do and stuff like that. So I think when we collect more data and have more people through, we send out the survey um, and, and do that. And even, you know, people coming to our events and stuff, because we need a bigger collection. I think you need three or four people to have a successful mastermind because they really need to work off each other. Yeah. Yeah. How about, how about this? Cause me, um, I like the idea about the, the fall being maybe by the fall you have schedules and you have places where they can go kind of, you are, you've already got that figured out. Um, but what about women, like just a, a women's empowerment mastermind group? Done. Like that's that, easy. That, that seems to me easier, low hanging fruit. And we'll get you used to sort of like what, what I would what like to see is each of you facilitating at least one of hub factor on your own weekly. And that the hub factor is starting to fill like part of like, let's say for revenue is, you know, again, sort of figuring out, you know, when are you doing your one on one coaching and when are you facilitating sort of teams in a sense, right? And and that we were talking about that. So we kind of looked at, so here's what happens to me when I do a hub factor. It takes a lot of energy for me because what, what I do is I'm quite in tune with everybody that shows up there. And so I have something for almost everybody, whether I share it or not, I kind of listen to what the group's saying and putting forward. But I just find by the end of that, I'm exhausted and we need to debrief it a little bit and do it. So we're actually, we put on our calendar that we're gonna do a, map, um, a hub factor in the evening, once a month, because there's people who just can't come during the day. Mm. So kind of how I've been looking at it, cause I'm talking a three day week right now, right? Cause I have other things that maybe aren't directly related to the hub, like my mortgage stuff or family stuff or just life that kind of I, I leave Monday and Fridays for. Um, Wednesdays is our day to kind of connect with the three of us and really plan and do stuff. Now that'll ease off a little bit because we've got kind of stuff in the works. 
So we could do a hub factor, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then do a mastermind in that evening right now, right? You know, potentially there's that. I like the idea of doing, you know, women empowerment mastermind. Um, and and certainly kind of taking that on and doing it. We got our internet and some of our, we're kind of in two, two spheres right now. We've rolled out with doing this, but we don't necessarily have all the tech stuff in place that makes it really easy. So that's my goal by the end of next week. We'll have business cards and, and postcards set up. We'll have a TV, so Zoom's right there. We'll have the right speaker. Like that's all the stuff I, I'm quite good at. And you know, we have our Google Drive and everything. So right now we're still kind of fumbling a little bit because nothing's easy. And so and and you know, it, it's what I think we need to decide as a group is I, I like the direction you're taking us and doing it. So if masterminds is something we all see a lot of value in, we actually just need to put a date when it's going to start and a cost, right? And then just put it out there for people to show up because we're doing a lot of stuff for free right now for people, which is fine because we each have stuff that we can do. But what that happens is it means I have to focus more on doing mortgage stuff and I'm burning myself out because I'm giving three days a week to the hub. And then I'm putting two, three other days a week into mortgage stuff because that's actually what's paying me. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I get it. And I, I think at the beginning it's, you know, each of you needs to get a certain amount of money in. And I, I think like a, the women's empowerment mastermind could be even $30. Yeah. And because it, there's so much value that's actually coming with that. Right. And so I think to, to move from that zero to 10 of what it is and look at the real that, like, I mean, even if you got entrepreneurs together, I might even oh. say $50, Yeah. you know, to sit, to be at that table. Cause it's, it's, you know, and other people, like if, if you're dealing with very wealthy people, you could have a hundred, $200 each, you know, like it's, it's, it's like, there's so much value. One insight, one, totally. one thing is going to change your life. It's worth hundreds of dollars, you know? So, so how often do you see a mastermind getting together? Like ideally, if you were to design this for us, how long would it go on? And, you know, cause I've done it where a mastermind has been around a group or like I belong to one that they just met every Friday and it was free and you just kind of show up. Right. And it was all around who knows. So which is leadership and stuff like that. Well, I think, I think like the, the niche is the cards and the insights, right? Like it yeah. works. And so I, I, I think to, to really look at, um, there might be a price, like, let's say you have a mastermind and it's four people, like if it's four people, it's $50 each. But if there's eight people, it might be $30 each. And if there's 12 people, it could be $20 each kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's less time, but you pay less money. Some people, I want to pay more money. I don't want to sit around and listen to 12 people. I want, I want like, so, so it's kind of like at some point, the, the, the concept of bringing people together to be in a mastermind is like, a, is like the base default of the business. And then and is this mastermind just it's fifty dollars for a one-time shot or is it ongoing like it, it depends on you know like what i'm thinking is i'll create like a menu where it's kind of like what do you want like who are you and what do you want okay and so it's like custom designing the performance where like let's say someone comes in and they got a budget of a thousand bucks and you're going okay well you're going to have like you know a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with each of us you know once a week and you're going to go to two teams and you're going to get, you know, it's, it's like looking at you become the place for their personal development money because yeah. all your, all your pieces are adding together. And, and if you get this program here, this program is going to fit with it. And this program is going to fit with it. And, and we're, we're building you towards your ideal kind of world in a sense. And I think you hit the nail on the head when what really helped me that you just summarized is we're the place for personal development, you know, personal and professional development. I think they go hand in hand. Um, and so what is your budget? What, what are you, what do you have this year, this quarter to spend on that? 
and then we have a price point and and like i really like that i think that makes it a lot easier and so you know for me when i was when we had our restaurant with jack keaton's i knew i wanted a coat and i was willing to allocate 300 bucks a month and i was okay to commit for a year right so what what you would do then is you would just say okay because i think people like paying you know so much a month for something if it's going to be an ongoing right and and six months to like i find six you could do it in three months for someone it's shorter right but you i, I like putting it in that block so instead of saying you know say we work with people three months six months or a year right and obviously the longer they commit the price can kind of decrease but then in that you know and we just have different tiers or different levels that we can stay to people and say you know do you want individual or group you know if they're okay with group okay so we have a group of entrepreneurs and they meet every tuesday at two o'clock and we do a mastermind and then you also get one-on-one -on -one coaching you get two hours a month or one hour a month, you know, like we'd have to look at the price structure, but I like that because then, and then someone, you know, you can kind of go from there, right? Because time is precious to people and money is precious, right? And for some people, they have way less time and for some people, they have more money, right? And so I think it's, I, I really like that idea of having a menu and, and kind of what would be helpful for me is if, if it's you and Lori, because you know the processes, here's the things that we can do, like as a group individually, give me 10 things, right? Tell me what the price are, because then it's for me when I'm talking to people, I, I can understand stuff pretty quickly because I know what kind of questions to ask. Then it's really easy for me because I was getting water at Giant Tiger and there was a, a young guy standing behind me. He was probably in his 20s, mid 20s. And I was telling him I was in Yorkton and I was working at the hub. And he was kind of asking, and then I asked him what he did. Well, he's a roofer. And so I was like, are you excited? Do you like it? And he actually started his own business this year, right? So I was just saying, there's a couple grants. I would have loved to have a card and said, you know, you're starting your business. Come and come down and see me there because we can really help you figure out how to market it or do that. But I just didn't know what systems or processes that fit within the toolkit the new paradigm toolkit that we could do and i'm just kind of missing that so if i knew here's the 10 the 12 the 20 whichever it is and we we put together kind of a description of areas you would use it right like and and it could overlap for me that's far easier and then we know a price and then it's super easy to build a package for someone someone shows up they show up for our tuesday hub factor right now and and you know like Bonnie, my mom, for example, she's close to retirement at um, at her job. She works as an HR person, really wants to make a change and step in, but she needs to be a little bit bold. And her real talent is stirring up the fire for people. So I love when she works with people first because she gets them really excited about her vision. And I want to build her into my process because then when they come to me, they're already on fire about what they want to do. And all I need to do is actually put, help them put the steps together. So, so for example, use her, well, she would come and right now it's like, okay, so what tools I can, I really quickly can identify what someone should be doing. Like, that's just my gifting. But then it's like, okay, here's our tools. Who really loves doing that within our group? So talking about that ideal job. So, okay, so here's the package, you know what, it's 500 bucks or whatever it is. And these are the processes. And I think that's an easy sell for people because people need that tangible when they're spending money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I feel really, really good. So what would be helpful is, because I'm going to have to talk to the group next week, um, and I know we have a meeting with you on Thursday and you have some stuff you want us to do. What do you need from us in order to start creating this toolkit or menu? Do you need anything from us or can you start on that? No, I can start on that. Uh, okay. Definitely can start on that. Um, okay. I, think, I think there'll be a bit of back and forthness, but I think, you know, I, I've had, I've done it many times in different ways and I just have to find some of my own maps of, of, <laughs> of, uh, yeah, I'm wondering where that one is. Or just do it again because it's it's just so obvious, kind of like right now, right? It's like, okay, here are the pieces. 
Yeah, and if you put us together those pieces, because really you're the one who is like the oracle, right? You're seeing over everything and you know what you can pull in. And Lori has a similar idea because she's been doing it a lot longer. I think that would really help all of us to be able to move forward and start earning some income right off the hop. Um, and then the, yeah, so that would be amazing. And I think then it's easy to, it, it is such an easy lead into people who have come into the hub now to go back to them to say, you know, here's the process and, and we want to sit down with you. So we're trying to create our own processes. And I, what I'm hearing you say is we don't need to, because you have those, you may need to train us on them. So we're familiar with it. And then we just start doing it. And, and so I think that's great. The other thing I will say is the sooner that you can get to Yorkton to be with us, we need that male energy because there's just, you know, like women are great and I love working with men. I actually enjoy it, but there's just something about the language men speak to each other when they're talking about career or talking about different stuff. And, and that's where we're kind of lacking on our team right now is we need that male energy. So someone wants to take it to the next level we just need that. So the sooner you can be here with us, because and even teach us and train us right on right. stuff. And I know we're limited right now. But that's one thing that keeps showing up for me is that we need some men just speak a different language. And they're, they're off, not all of them, but a lot of them are very analytical, right? So it's like the equation and 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 it's not they do have the dream, but they're looking at the practical pieces for a lot of it. And so we can do that, but just having someone else there that holds that space, they just connect a little bit differently, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so th I think this was really, really good. I'm excited to start um, analyzing the steps and looking at the process I do and kind of actually writing out what I would fit under those and what that would look like. So I'll send you two proposals that I've done now just so you can see it. But um, next week, I'll start working on kind of really identifying that. And I've been thinking a lot about that calendar as far as how much time and where am I going to put it. And what I found for myself is I would rather have a longer weekend, like, you know, because my husband's always off Sunday, Mondays. So for me, instead of having a whole week off, I'd rather have days where I just work on stuff. And I know these are the times that I'm available for this or this and this, as opposed to taking one week off. Okay. It's different with holidays, but I just find because I, especially as you're working with people in different areas, and, and it's not just your mental capacity, but you're tapping into your intuition and, and really guiding them through the process, that if I kind of know what that looks like, it's harder to get back into it, right? I got you. I got you. Yeah. So for me, kind of um, Monday morning is always kind of my day that we're home as a family. And then Friday morning um, is kind of when I work. So I like, I'm always kind of flexible. And I'm fortunate I can do that right now. But my solid days are, you know, like Monday afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'd rather not have Monday, and then Friday, if it's needed. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of, but I, you know, having been in the hospitality industry for 15 years, 10 years, I'm like pretty flexible when it comes. It's not a matter of what day of the week it is. It's like, whatever that looks like. Right. Well, no, this was a great call and great to hear, uh, to get more in, input about your gifts and uh, how you operate and, and how you see things to need to go. Um, so that's good for me, the feedback and understanding you know, because each person is so different and in different contexts, and it's just like, okay. And then I've got you know this twenty-five years of idea in my head that you know is, is the problem could be pouring in the wrong way, you know, just pouring too much or in the wrong way for where you're at, right? So to me, you're a great reality check, and um, so I really appreciate that. That's awesome. Cause that's what I find I kind of bring to the team when we all kind of get together, right? Is it's like you know, Lori's got all these amazing ideas and she's so familiar with everything. And 
this and Sylvia is so able to kind of pull it all together and knows what we need to do and Carrie's like well when is this happening and we need this and we need this and I'm just like okay hey, hold the phone we're talking three very different things let's stop and let's focus back on to what's the priority here guys and then we're not getting off on a tangent or something so yeah so but it's it's great to be able to show up in that space because for a lot of places um being the builder can challenge a lot of people because they're not um, comfortable with it because they feel threatened, right? And so a lot of my life has been conflict with people mm. just because I process information so fast. So if you give me something and you give me different scenarios, I can often see what the solution is and I've already kind of worked it out. Maybe I can't say it, but in my mind, I can just see it. But for a lot of people, um, and I've had to really adapt to different styles of people knowing that they need certain things. But I have had very few spaces where this gift and this talent I have is a value to people because they're insecure or they feel like it's taking something away. So it's nice to be able to be appreciated and show up in this capacity because it's like, this is what I'm good at and I want to just help you. So you're comfortable with me doing that, right? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, the idea is massive, right? And your, your ability to do exactly what you do with your clients, right? To, to see the pieces, to see what's there, to get to move forward, you know, is, to me is fantastic. I mean, I'm, you know, to me, at some point, I don't know how I'm going to keep up to you ladies at all. But, <laughs> but and, and I see, you know, and I have other projects, right? The thing is, this isn't just one I've got, you know, I've got massive things going on and, and it's just like I spent 25 years bringing this big rock to the top of the mountain and now the, the rock's going all over and it's starting to collect and I'm like, my chain's connected to my leg and it's starting to pull me and I'm going, oh my God. Be careful what you were hoping for, right? I know. I mean, there's nothing worse than the, the plan that it actually starts to work, you know, like it's, I'm used to the other thing. I'm used to, I'm used to... <laughs> Well, and I think when you're um, somebody who is is designing the pieces behind the scenes, and I think of my son Keaton, he's my middle one. And so for him, he shows up in a situation and he's incredibly overwhelmed because all he hears is all this stuff, right? But he has he's so smart and he has quite the ability to understand it, but he can't do it like that, right? And so I think when you have someone who is constructing this stuff like you know like the architect actually designing the map me as a builder showing up it's like yeah I know that's what it's supposed to look like and yet there's a piece of let's just go do it that can be challenging because there's a lot of calculations and stuff that you need I'm happy to let someone else calculate and do it and I don't mean to be I don't really care right like so just tell me what you want it to be tell me what I have to work with it and make sure they're cut the way they need to be cut but um when you you have people so it's I can see why for you it's like okay I want to make sure that this is coming out the way it needs to come out and people are just coming up and wanting it and you can only work as fast as you can and it's almost like you got to gear up your speeds because for so long you were just kind of getting this stuff going and now it's got this momentum and it's like oh my goodness <laughs> yeah yeah no for sure but it's great it's great. It's uh, for forward progress, and I and I, we we all want to sort of bring into the world uh, whatever our, our our deepest heart's desire is, right? And so, to me, as long as you you ladies are happy and motivated, um, I'm just inspired to 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 get to work and keep up. Um, <laughs> It's cool. Like, and I just, you know, Lori and I talk about this a lot. And I think this is where we're similar. It's like, I just want the world to be in a happier, better place. And when I say that, it's that I think a lot of our conflict and our this that we're doing is because people haven't spent the time to really find who they are and what do they value. So every time someone's showing up, they're in conflict with them, right? Mm. And and so for me, it's like, man, I just want to create an opportunity for you to be at peace and comfortable with yourself and doing what brings value. And it doesn't matter who else is doing that because there's enough for everybody. Mm. And 
let me leverage what you do. And it's not about how much you're making off doing it. If this is your skill set, great, I don't have to do it. But I think people don't, we're in this, this world where it's all about me, right? So this idea that it's all about working together and creating a space for people to show up. I love that, right? Like that's where Lori and I really line up. I just, you know, if, if I'm able to hit my status quo of what I need and all my bills are paid, I'm happy to give the rest to whatever. That's really what drives me, right? Mm. Just to, on a quick note at the end, have you thought of like a, 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 a women's entrepreneur networking event? We have, uh, haven't talked about it. Lori actually started Women Entrepreneurs, a chapter in Yorkton. Okay. So how it works is Women Entrepreneurs has regions within the province of Saskatchewan. So there's the Regina, they're based in Saskatoon. Lori started the one there. The challenge I found, and I think there's some good opportunities with women entrepreneurs, they brought in a new CEO about five years ago, and they really changed how they were doing things. And it became very much a, um, a bank type business and less about the entrepreneurial spirit. And, and so, um, I had just found, because when we had our restaurant, we had 40 plus employees and stuff. And I, even though I was a first year business, I hit that plateau of a million dollars in sales and X number of employees, and there was nothing they could help me with. And so they're really good for startup. But what they're not great at doing is creating a community to other and entrepreneurs empower other people because everyone's trying to get their voice the loudest. Well, I'm a consultant, so talk to me as a, like, I know a ton of consultants and we don't all do the same thing and I'm okay with that. Mm. So if I can refer to you, you do that because you know, you're doing leadership and development. I'll help you with your ideas and stuff. So, yeah. So not that there won't be an opportunity for it. Um, I think we'd have a better chance with some of the other organizations that I've been involved in, in the past and stuff like that. Um, but I think um, we really need to systemize some of our stuff so that when we go, it's solid. Okay. 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 Well, great, great seeing you. And yeah. uh, I'll see you on Thursday next week. You're going to have all three of us ladies back to back. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I think we need to do a team one. I, I, I sense the need that I need to speak to the four of you at once uh, too. Um, but we, I think I, I think I asked Sylvia to arrange that or something. Yeah. So, so my understanding is, and I'm going to say Saskatchewan time instead of B BC time. So you're Sylvia. So you have Lori at noon, her time uh -huh. on Wednesday, then Thursday, you have Sylvia at 10, her time. I'm yeah. at 11 and Carrie's at 12. Yeah. And then the same thing on Thursday, we're all connecting with you at three o'clock. Okay. To go over the stuff for an hour, whichever was the stuff you brought forward that you wanted us to work through. Okay. So if you wanted Thursday at three is our time as a group of the four of us, we always connect. Okay. So if you ever want to do something, that's a really easy time that we're all available. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Right. Hey. See you, Chris. Bye.